Good morning. Hemshachayim Beis, Volume 3, from page 1337. Uh, close to halfway down. Well, one third down the page. Okay. So, What we're learning here is further manifestation and deeper understanding of Gvura's role, the role of Gvura, starting from the highest levels and God's capacity to choose to confine things and create structure. So there's the structure itself, that's the Kalim, there's the energy that is used to create the structure, that's the Eir. And then there's God's power to emanate both those forces. So the interesting thing is the power to create structure. The measurer is not defined by measure, though he is the one that measures it. But like we call it, he called it a Medida Atzmis. Eir, interestingly, is the opposite. Its very nature is pshitas. It's shapeless. Because air before it goes into kalim, is air and sof, air obligable. But it's defined by the very fact that its definition is gilui. And gilui is a structure. Now, the gilui will ultimately manifest within the kalim. But like he said, every ha'ara has some form of medida, medida mamish. Because it's no longer the etzah. So the etzem has the power to create oir. That's the, cre the creation of expression of gilui. It also has the power to create kalim. And that requires the, the, the tagbeda sa'atzmis, what he calls, the gvuras in their root, which earlier we learned was helama atzmi. It's related to the rishimu, the root of the containers. So there you have, and there he calls that clearly as a medida mitzada etzem, that's a medida atzmis. And what is that? He says, this is, explains to us what is gvura of atik. So even though creation comes through chesed, because the ebrister, amati elam chesed yibana, chesed amar yivra, chesed is the flow of energy, oir, that creates. However, that, that, that's his pastor Sachais, as he says, an extension of the energy. However, what does it count? How does that energy reach a place that's completely a paradigm shift of yesh ma'ayin? There you need more than just a flow of energy. You need the tagbetas, the intensity of the gvura atzmis to make that leap, like he says, because we're dealing with even atzilus, is more distant from Ainsov than it is from Asiya. So to go into Atsilis from, from Ainsov, Oyer and Chesed is not enough. You need to have that Tegbedis, and especially when it goes into further than Atsilis into Bria, into lower worlds. Because even Atsilis, as I said, is infinitely distant from Ainsov more than it is from Asiya, and especially the spheres of Atsilis, which have already substance, they're already an, an, an entity, an identity. So that's Davka Mepchinus Gvurus the Atik Shutak Beres Asmus Lias Yiridis El Matta Medrega Shein Arech. So there you see that you need more than just Oyer, you need also some intensity within it, and that's the Tak Beres Asmus. But we're going to learn that Gvura is more than that. It also is the force that will shape the Sphiris, because Oyer on its own, you could say, would be Pashat, would be shapeless. So Gvura. The root of the, the, the Gvura from the Helama Atzmi is also going to be the power to create spheres, which we're going to learn next now. I just want to say a few things uh, before we go further, just to put things a little more into context. But it's, what's apparently emerging, at least the way I understand it, even though he doesn't bring the Ageris Arkadish, the famous Ageris Arkadish Simechov, 20th epistle, with Al Tareb's Mechadish really weeks, weeks before he passed away, actually. 
that the Yesha Nivra is rooted in the Yesha Miti, but when I think of it in the context of what we're learning, it seems to me that there are three, ultimately three elements that help us connect to the highest levels of the divine. Remember, the story is about the story of I'm Bezach, citizen general's interface. So we know this Kalim, we know this Eris, this Kalim, but there's also the Yesh. The Yesh Anivra is not just Kalim, the Yesh Anivra has another element that it senses Aniva Afsiyet. We don't feel we have a source. The Kalim is structure and as such is not as, as uh, closely identified to its source, it's somewhat removed from the source, but it's not necessarily that the Kali says, I and nothing else. I don't have a source. The Kali at the end of the day is capable of being bottled to the earth. It's a Kali to the earth, not Silas, for example. So based on this, it seems to me that I would put things into the broader context, it would be like this. Oir reveals to us godliness. And why is revelation so critical? Because without revelation, we have no consciousness of it. To say that the etzen and even the helama atzmi is within us, but we're not aware, then it doesn't, that doesn't serve the purpose of an interface. That's not dira betachtenim. Dira betachtenim means that tachtenim feel and experience godliness. So it is critical because it gives us basically experience, the experience of divine expression. And we must have that. I spoke yesterday about etzem and ispastus, we, in this world, just having an atzmizdik connection without expression would be like saying you're fundamentally connected to your spouse or to your children, but you never speak to each other. And there's nothing in common that you can uh, relate to. It, we're connected. We're connected in the etzem. That's an atzmizdik thing that's like from above or from within. So giluyim are critical because giluyim is where everything manifests in expression, in identity, in, uh, in ent entities and individuals and everything that we consider to be the structure of existence. I, I use the word structure broadly here. The kalim, on the other hand, are not gilui alakus. The kalim is the actual structure, the actual structure. If you think of keli like the goof, the body to the soul. So the soul energizes, the soul carries all the energy, but the body is necessary because you need to have a structure of existence. So you have the oir of chachna, that tells you about the divine manifesting in Chachma, and the Kali of Chachma is the structure of Chachma. Okay, so on its own, we could say that Kali, of course, is lower than the Ur, er, because the Ur er is like the Neshama and the Guf. And in, in concept, you could, have, you could even argue that God is not revealing to us where the Kali came from. In other words, the Kali is necessary, and the Kali, its job is that instead of being a, a container or a body, or physical existence, or all the kelim, as an entity on its, of its own, it's bottle, and it's a recipient, like a student, to the teacher called the Ur. And that's a healthy structure. The keli of Chachm is a keli to the Ur of Chachm. The eye is a healthy vessel and container to the power of vision. But because God in his benevolence and in wanting to be full partners with us, said, no, I'll reveal to you that the very creation of a keli, besides that it's a keli to the oyer, which is great. Every time you do a mitzvah, you're aligning the physical world to the divine oyer. Every time something is aligned, it's basically oyer and keli working together. But I'll teach you something deeper. Not only the keli is a keli to the oyer, and it draws the oyer into it, but the keli itself was created by a power that comes from a higher place than the oyer. My power to limit my koyach hagvul, which is rooted in my helama atzmi. So now, besides the keli revealing the oyer, it also reveals something that is beyond the oyer. The power, that, that helama atzmi, that core concealed state as we've been learning, the root of the keli. Or in more specific terms, the root of the keli, the rishimu, which is rooted in the helama atzmi. And the rishimu is not a revealed state. It's not like the kav. So now we have a deeper understanding. However, again, though he doesn't say this, but based on other this, especially the later my of the of, 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 from the Friedrich Kareba and the Rebbe, there's another thing that the Yesh Hanivra has that even the Kalim of Atsilas don't have. The Kalim, you could say, are rooted in Helam Atzmi, but only the Yesh Hanivra, 
that does not feel, but does not feel it has a source, is rooted, you know, where is something higher than Helam Atzmi? In the Yesha Amiti, in Atzmus Mitziusim Atzmuse. Remember, Helam Atzmi is still not pure Atzmus. Atzmus Mitziusim Atzmuse, who has no, has no cause. He's the only one that can create a yesh in this world. So essentially, Kalim is the first step that leads us to Helam Atzmi. The yesh leads us all the way back to Mitsusi Matsmusi and to Bilti Mitsiyas Nimtza, which is higher than the Helam Atzmi and definitely higher than the Ur. But the Helam Atzmi has something in common because the Helam Atzmi is telling us that God is not limited by expression, He's not defined by Gilui. So in a way, you could say, using the analogy of the artist, that there are three things. When the artist creates art, so we discussed from the art, you can figure out what the artist is like. But you can't figure out what he's, what he's not like. In other words, the fact that he transcends being an artist, how, you can't see that from the art. However, God, of course, embedded in his art to tell us that I'm not only an artist, which is Uyr, but I'm also someone that can create a Kali. The canvas itself, the very structure itself is also created by the artist. In a human artist, the human artist doesn't create the actual canvas. He doesn't create the gvul of his art, but he has the capacity to define his art in a particular way. And then there's the etzem that's beyond, altogether beyond the art, both, both the kalim of the art, which is the, the let's say the, the actual structure of the art and the, and the message and the, and the, and the sentiment that's expressed in the art. So think of the words on the page is like the kalim, the ideas that they convey is the oir. And then there's the very fact that God can create such letters and words is koich gvul helam atzmi. And then there's the etzem that's beyond it all that only the yesh anivr can reveal. And, and that he's not addressing right here in Ayin Beis. He's not addressing it. Why am I bringing it up? Because once you read the whole thing, I feel it's valuable to mention because when you understand other parts of Chassidus, even though I always say, let's not bring other parts of Chassidus here, but in this context, I think it's important to mention this, at least for the record. Okay. I just wanted to give a little more, and I want to go back to the thing I said earlier, that it's very clear that the one who's moided, the measurer, in other words, how God creates measure, as a, when he, like he calls it, the, the two different ephanim we learned, shamedid mitzad, either due to the intensity, that creates the ischalkus, or atzmus moided atzme kav that that's not a true medida, because it's he is himself is choosing to manifest in that fashion. So the medida he creates, kalim, actual containers, is a measure, and they have parameters. Oir also is a measure, even though its parameters are more on the oir level, but the very fact he said gili itself, he said clearly, is, is a... Um, um, is a, is a form of definition. So that's a definition. Whereas the, the etzem that's moided, which means the medida atzmis, so it isn't tagbedus atzmis, there it's beyond measure. So it's a measure that's, that it's the beyond measure that's creating measure. Okay, going back to where we are now. So, we're that, so now we understand that gvura the atik is necessary. First reason he said, because what, what makes the leap, what accounts for the leap? We understand that existence comes from the flow of chesed, of kindness, the nature of kteva tev lehetiv, God's kindness. So he's bestowing kindness by creating. Like he said in Shai Yuched the words chesed v'ispashtus achayis, which comes from Gdul Lasei, right, that's the extension of our energy. But in order, makom machbik, they shei yirid the se'ed sof, to create and to emanate the emanations, there is the leap involved, because it's ein arech. So you need something stronger than just a regular flow of chesed, and that's where Tagbedas comes in, the gvura of Atik, which causes it to take, to so-called push forward the thrust of the earth to go all the way down into structure of Atzillus and further into the structure of, of Nivroim. But now he's going to add more to that. But since I added some things here, and may someone, may, some, if you, anyone wants to ask anything about what I've said till now in the summary, please do so, but then we'll continue reading, if you'd like to ask anything. 
So, how would you describe the? <clears throat> I don't know how to the distance. Me and Atmos. After what you said just now, that how would I Mahat, describe what? I didn't understand. De describe what? Say that the, again. The, the relations or the distance between Helem Ho'atmi and Atmos. After what you said, that Helem Ho'atmi is Bechlal, not Atmos. Uh, well, uh, of course how, not. How, how, you can't define Atmos by anything, not by Helem and not by Gilu. However, Helem reveals more about Atmos and higher levels of Atmos than Gili does. We don't define Atmos by Helem. Atmos is not subject to the words Gili and Helem altogether. So both are, are, are ultimately expressions. One is Yecholte Lohoyer, Yecholte Shaloy Lohoyer, but Atmos is beyond everything. So, so Gili reveals that... the Giloyim of Atmos, and the Helema Asmi reveals that God is now bound. Yesterday I read specifically from page 1270, where he explains how each one reveals a different aspect. On page 1270, if you want to look it up. So, so Asmus saying, is not bound by the word Helam either. So all the explanations about the Shimu and about the Rishesh Kalim, everything comes is, from is Helam Atmi. It's, it's, it's Mushrish in Helam Atmi, Shmaya Atmi, which is, he says, higher than the Rishesh Oyer, which is Mushrish in Oyer, or even Etzema Oyer. That's a pretty high level. Helam Atmi is a very, very deep level. We're learning that now. Is the level that was going to be the Yudgim Omidisarachmim, the power to transform Akeli to Oyer, Zdenis Lazachis? Let's not uh, minimize it. It's, it's extremely high. I would even say Oyer, the Alter Rebbe trembled when he said Atsilus. You're talking about Helam Atzmi as if it's like, okay, you know what? What's well, nothing really? It's not nothing. It's one of the, it's, it's, it's one of the, it's one of the highest possible levels to reach. It's the Helam Atzmi, it's fundamentally in a state of Helam meaning beyond any form of gilui, the root of, the, like you said, the Helam Atzmi, the root of Keich HaGvul, the Rishimu, Sheir HaShakelim, Tagbeir Atzmis, like you said. It's coming Medidim Etzada Etzem. That's all Helam, right? The, the Medina I'm not sure what, what, what is all. I, I mean, I don't know what you mean by all. Everything I just said, no, the, the, the Gvuris, Tagbeir is, is rooted in Helam Atzmi. Yeah. That's yeah. what he said very clearly. And that's my next question. This is the, the Medina Sur, the Cardenissa. Now we're calling it Gvuras the Attic. Okay, so this this the Medina Beatem is talking about the Helem or Atzmi, not about Atmos. I didn't say that. Maybe it's Atmos as he's creating the Helem or Atzmi. That's how I would say it. Because that's what he says, Atmos moided Atzmei. So it's Atmos as he is, as he's, as he's manifesting in the Helam Atzmei. Okay. So let's continue. We are now at the line that begins, Lamata b'madregish en arech. It's about a third down more than a third or close to half down the page on page 1337, the pages can be found at imbase.com if you want to follow along. And we know that Atik is called the Tachtein Sheba Maitzel. That's a language from the Ariza in Eitz Chaim. Let me explain what that means. In the big question that the Mukabalim have, the Kabbalists have, by the interface between godliness and, and existence. So, as we've discussed a number of times, the Pardis of Ramak and the Rameh have a disagreement, Ima Keser who are Ainsof or not. Some say that Keser is Ainsof, and therefore we connect with Keser, through that we connect to godliness. And others say that Keser is not Ainsof, Ainsof is higher than Keser. comes Arizal and says Keser has both dimensions to it. Part of it is Ein Sof. Atik is Tachtein Shebe Ein Sof. Or, or like he says, Tachtein Shebe Maitzil. 
it's the lower part of the mitzel, the emanator. And what means lower? We can't say really the level lower. It means as the emanator, the creator, or the emanator, the source, is, 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 is um, beginning to relate to existence, but it's still removed from existence. That's why it's called at. And then arich is called reish hanatzolim, the head, the beginning of the emanations. So their kesa then has both parts, and that's how the interface works. Then comes chachma is the beginning of the, is actual the first natzal, the first emanation, the sphere of chachma that comes ma'ayin timotzev from arich. In uh, volume one, we learned even further, he said, but still the question then just carries over to atik and arich, how do they connect? So he said it's chachmis tima, which is both in atik and in arich, and Chach Mistema has a dimension that's the Atik dimension, the Arach dimension, basically super consciousness. And that's the ultimate interface. It's going to be relevant to what we learn. That's what I mentioned. So how is this relevant to us? So Atik is used. Usually we talk about Atik, we mean Atik of Atsilus. Kesar of Atsilus has Atik. But as we know, there's microcosm, macrocosm. There's also Atsilus the Klolos. Atzil is the clawless, is earning itself before the tzimtzum. And then there's the head, 10 hidden spheres. The 10 hidden spheres start with Atik also. Atik al keser of Malchus of Ein Sof. So it's true, there's not real spheres there, but there's the beginning of the envisioning of the spheres. And then there's also, we learned Atik, Ke'en Atik, the Reish of the Kav, the head of the Kav. We learned before from Eitz Chaim is like similar to Atik. It has a similar dimension like Atik. We refer, I'm just referring, I'll refer you to where we saw that before when he talked about the Yud on page 1331. That that silas. So Atik, just like spheres, just like Chochmah exists in Atzillus and Bria and Yetzirah and Asiya, is Chochmah and Ak, is Chachma also in Arich and in Atik. So Atik also exists in all these levels. And in each level, it's referring to the highest level, so to speak. Well, the lowest level of Ainsov, but the highest level that precedes Ishtalshlus. So it's just like we said. So we said Gvura of Atik in this case is Tagberis Atzmis. It has that power to, the, the, to create that intensity, to draw the energy down. So now the Rebbe Rashab is going to explain further what this role of Gvura the Atik is specifically. So Atik is Takhtenu Sheba Maitzil, the Esa Sphere Shebai, and the 10 spheres within Atik. Hein Bechinas Esa Sphere Sagnuzis. These are the 10 hidden spheres. Now let me explain. According to the Arizal, the, actually the 10 hidden spheres are in Atik and not necessarily before the Tzimtzum. Chsidis is Machadish that there's also 10 hidden spheres before the tzimtzum. But if you look in the actual Rizal, that's the 10 hidden spheres he attributes to Atik. Siddhis explains that since Atik is also rooted before the tzimtzum, you also have 10 hidden spheres before the tzimtzum. But regarding our discussion here, it's applicable on all levels here. So he says there's the 10 hidden spheres. So what do you see from this? That in Atik, there's, there's a structure of 10. The Ima Yeshan Leib B'chines Metzias Klau. Even though they're in Atik, they're not at all existent. What does that mean? Think of the artist is envisioning the art. Is that actual spheres? Or it's just the artist envisioning the spheres? So we learned earlier in volume one, it's not a metzias at all. It's a spheres lagnuzis. It says, ain spheres lagnuzis. There's no actual structure. The only reason we call them 10 spheres is because we have no other word to use. So we're saying, where did Chachma Bina Das, Esther Spheres Hagluyas come from? Where did the 10 revealed faculties come from? So you say they came from hidden faculties. But, in, but within the Godhead, within Eden Sof, or even an Atik, you, call, you can't call them a Metzias yet. Like before he said, remember he said that Atzillus, for it to come become Atzillus Sviris, the Sviris are Metzias. He says clearly, Chachma, he said clearly, that's Metzias Sviris Hagluyas. But in Atik, they're Esas Sviris Hagnuzas. But nevertheless, even though, like he says, well, we're still calling them 10 spheres. So in other words, relative to the state, 
before it arose in his desire, before the artist envisioned these 10, compared to that, even these 10 that are still only part of his vision, but not actual spheres, you still call them 10 spheres. So there's a level of spheres saying cats, infinite possibilities, infinite possibilities of art, infinite, possi infinite spheres. There's even higher than that, no spheres altogether. So everything is relative here. So even though in Attic it's not actual spheres, but they're still spheres. So the question is, where did that come from? Oyer itself is just like sunlight. Sunlight is just a reflection of the source. So it's true, Oyer has Agbola and Siur because the mere fact that you say it's an expression is already a state of definition like we learned earlier on the previous page. He said it explicitly. That he said, um, so it's a of Ainsof. But where do spheres come from? In other words, Chesed on its own or Eir on its own wouldn't have spheres. So he's going to answer, it's coming from the Gvuras of Atik. So now he says like this This Chalkus, Zeus, who Gamke Mepchinus Tagbeiras Ta'atzmus. And this distinction, remember, we said this Chalkus comes from Gvura. In Chesed, everything is one flow, there's no distinction. That was the same, he said, at the bottom of page 1335, he said, he said, um, what did he say? He said, So where did the of 10 spheres? Where does the artist even have the capacity to envision 10 spheres? Where do they come from? Because the very fact, envision structure, comes from the Koyach HaGvul, because the very fact, envision structure, comes from the Koyach HaGvul, and that is from Tagbeiris HaAtzmus. So in addition to what he said before, that the Tagbeiris creates a, an, an intensity that allows the flow to come down into Netzolim, into emanations and into creation, even though it's Yesh Ma'ayin, because it's so distant from Ein Sof. Now he's adding, furthermore, that it also is the cause for the actual structure of the Ischalkus. So that's even in the 10 hidden spheres. Or Befrat HaIschalkus, that's the spheres Datsilus. Now he's combining both elements. And especially that this is also going to ultimately lead to the 10 spheres of Atsilus, which is called 10 revealed spheres. What allows them to have structure? So he says it's also coming from the Tegbeiris, from the Gvura, not from the Chesed. So the Chesed is the actual energy flow. That's fine. But what gives it the ability to flow all the way downward and with, with, uh, with, with this Chalkus, with distinction, that's the Tagbeiris, the Gvuras of Atik, the Tagbeiris Ha'atzmus, which is manifesting the Tagbeiris Ha'atzmus. Okay. Is that clear? Before I go to the parentheses, let me see if everybody got that. If I need to explain it further, or if you have any questions. Now I was going to add in the parentheses just to make the plot thicken. Remember, we learned earlier that Gvura has two meanings. On page 1334, one is tzimtzum, concealment, and one is intensity. The concealment is about limiting the flow. The intensity, as we said, actually creates a tremendous forward energy, thrust, and it breaks it down into details, infinite details. So it's coming from strength, not coming from diminishing, it's actually coming from an intensity that's even stronger than ches. And he said as well that be'em is their interdependent. So now he's going to explain. So one second. So what do we say now? The Tagbeiris Ha'atzmus of Gurus of Atik, do they create the 10 hidden spheres or do they create the 10 revealed spheres? And the answer is both. So he's going to say there's actually a distinction which part of the Gvura does what. So he says, Ube'emes, Yeshlemer, She'ena, Daimon. Ube'emes, Yeshlemer, we can say that it's not similar to the way the Gvuras of Atik create the 10 hidden spheres and the way they create the 10 revealed spheres. Here's what he said. The distinction of the 10 hidden spheres, which is not yet the Metzias, it's all in God's vision. I'm sorry, that's coming due to intensity. You know, it's God's sheer power of intensity has the power, like we said, when you strike something very powerfully, it divides into parts. So it's coming actually from God's intensity, the intensity of Tagbeiris Atzmus. By Ischalkus, the essence of that silos, 
And the distinction of the ten spheres of Atsilis, which is now a Metzius, actual structure, who pchinus simtsum amirt. That's due to the gvuris as they manifest in symptom, in diminish, in symptom, in concealment, and in diminishment. O commotion is barely ill, as was explained at length, but at length earlier, and this is going back all the way to the beginning of Ayin Beis. Inyan amshachis estesvius agluis magnuzis the inyan at symptom bezeh. So earlier he explained how did how did from the hidden spheres come revealed spheres. And the symptom that's necessary to go from that place. In other words, God envisioning existence before the symptom is one thing. But how did that end up being an actual structure? And that we need the symptom addition, and we need many, many levels of symptom. He explained at length three levels that the air goes through until it's able to actually go into containers. Because remember, before the symptom, there's no kalim. There's a sherish kalim. There's the oisias, but it's all still in a concealed state. It's not yet manifest in any structure. So what he's saying in the parenthesis here is that Gvuras of Atik, which is Tagberus Atmos, has two elements to it. One is its intensity. The, no, it's God's Shlemus, the Shlemus of Atmos. His pure sheer power has the ability not just to create Bligvul, but to create Ischalkus, a distinction of 10 spheres. And that's coming from his power, from, a, from his intensity from God's sheer kol yochel power. And then there's the actual creation, the actual ability to limit yourself. And er ha-chochme go into er ha- into klei ha-chochme in Atzillus. That is the second part of Gvura, which manifests itself in real symptom and concealment and diminishment. And both are correct. So the first one is not a state of diminishment. It's a state of actual f- deeper expression of godliness coming from even deeper than Eir. And the second one is actually subject to concealment and diminishment in order to have the actual structure. Basically saying, the power to create the structure of a spheres, that is Tagbeiris Atmos. That's intensity. The actual structure requires a symptom. And to put it in different words, if a teacher is teaching a student, his ability to, in his own mind, that he limit that he says, I'm going to now take my ideas, my brilliant ideas, and I'm going to prepare myself to present it to a student. That shows on a greater strength of the teacher, because some teachers cannot teach students. They only can speak to people on their own level. You have people who are brilliant, but they're unable to have that depth. Like when you see, like uh, when you say the wisdom of Shlema Mel, that he was able to create 3,000 misholim. Someone who can bring down an idea in a muscle means that they have a deeper understanding of the idea. So a teacher that can take his ideas and not only express them in an abstract um, way of earth, but can also envision how to express it to a student, it shows on a deeper power of the teacher because it means he's even more, he's more brilliant than the one that can't do that. But then there's another thing, the actual presentation to students. There... It's not coming from his intensity. His capacity to do so is coming from his brilliance, his deeper brilliance, even deeper than a brilliant teacher that can do that. But now comes another step. This is the art of actually communicating, spoon feeding an idea, step by step by step, which is another koyach. And that's a koyach of real simtsum, where you actually have to limit and say, okay, today we're going to learn Aleph, tomorrow Bez, and, and then Gimel and Dalad. We're going to learn Me'emes Saikar Nashma, then Chumash Lemikra, first Chumash, then Benesu Lemishna, etc. So you see two things here: the capacity to be able to bring it down to someone. That's like Esosphere Sagnusis. That comes from a Tagbedus, from a, a deeper power that he has. The actual process of teaching requires him to limit the flow. He can't reveal all of that, even that deeper power. It's originating from there. But the actual process requires symptom and mirt, uh, a concealment and a diminishment, or symptom and mirt. That's how I would explain it. I think it's a good analogy to explain these two types of how gvura plays a role, both in the hidden spheres and in the revealed spheres, as he explains here. And I'll stop again if anybody wants further explanation, because these are very, it's very short, very brief, and dense. And I'm trying to elaborate as much as possible. But still, I don't know if um, 
I'm conveying it all accurately. I mean, I'm conveying it all clearly, I should say. I think it is accurate. So if anybody wants to ask anything, Somebody please not. I could understand the whole, the whole audio in page Shin Lamedala 1334. Now we could understand it. He said there are yeah. two parts of it. Now it's, it's beginning to come together, yes. Yeah. That's Hobo Hotalia, because that without, be, without being able to do so in Tagbetis Asmus, you won't be able to bring it down into a real Simpson Bapel. Yeah. You could well, almost I'm say sorry. that one is, you could almost say that one is the Koyachat Simpson and one is the actual Simpson. The Koyachat Simpson is, the, is a tremendous power that God can limit the flow. And the actual limiting is, is another power which is implementing, executing it. Like you find many people can strategize and, and on paper, but they can't actually implement. Go ahead, I'm sorry. In previous volumes, uh, I mean, uh, we, the Rabbi Rashab in, in detail explained a lot of the aspect of the Sephira that was three parts to it. It was the uh, Sipur, Maspir, and Sapir. How does that fit into this? Uh, is the sapphire the illumination, the, the hidden ore that, that comes from the helm? Is that like, how does that fit into this picture? Well, first of all, the three levels I just mentioned before, the, when he talks about how you get from the hidden spheres to the revealed spheres, he talked about, he didn't talk about, he didn't speak yet about sphere uh, 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 and misper, um, sipur, sapphire. He was talking there that the oil goes through three stages. There's the oil that's completely higher than Kalim. There's the oil that's higher than Kalim. And there's the oil that goes into the Kalim. Nekud de Kav Shetach. So he spoke at length in the, uh, basically, I would say in chapters, uh, maybe 40, 50, even earlier, 30, where he talked about those three dimensions of how the air goes through the stages till it gets from, from Esosphere Sagnusis to Esosphere Sagluyas. Um, what you're addressing is not so much, um, they also correspond that the spheres, as they are misper, is their number, is their more external expression, their outer expression. Sipur is the narrative they tell. And there he says they tell also the concealed narrative, that which is behind the scenes. And Sapir is full illumination of the deeper levels. So you can explain in the same way that when the Eiris are in the Kalim, um, there's the spheres that are the structure, the, like, like the art. As we study the art, we start learning the story behind the art. That's the, misp, the Sipur. And then we start the Sapir, which is the more transparent level that begins to reveal the Eir and the Kalim is revealing, the, the art is revealing dimensions that are even beyond the story, more like revealing the godliness within it all. Um, that's the simple way of explaining. It. As far as what we're talking about here, here we're talking about Tagbeir Sa'asmus, that's something even deeper. That's where the Kalim themselves originate from. Not just the Kalim revealing Eir. If you remember, I spoke earlier, the Kalim reveal Eir is a, is a critical component. But then the Kalim begin to reveal something more. Firstly, they reveal, like in this case, the Sphiris of Atsilis reveal the, the Gvura and Simpson necessary to create them. And ultimately, the hidden spheres are, um, are coming from the are, are expression of Tagber Sa'atzmus. So it's all dependent. I mean, there's certain things you need to distinguish between them, and certain things are very clearly what he's trying to identify here, which is he was talking mostly about that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so this is in order to create the Hizchalkos, the distinction of the 10 spheres, whether it's the revealed spheres or the hidden spheres. And, and certainly this is the case, even more so, in order to create the creations. This is now, we're talking about the Natsalim, the emanations, which also he explained that Silas is more distant from Mainsov than it is from Asiya. But it's still emanations. They still have something, they're still divine in nature. In order to create the Nevraim, which means that now you want the divine energy should descend so much so, all the way to an extent, all the way up to the Mata Mata, 
Lahavis Nevroim, Bibchinis Yesh Vidover Mamish, to create creations and creatures, which are Mamish Yesh Vidover. At Silas, when you said Yesh Vidover, it means it was substance, it's an identity in contrast to something that doesn't have an identity. But now we're talking about a Yesh Vidover Mamish. We're talking about literally a creation that does not necessarily identify directly. In At Silas, the Eris and Kalim both feel their source. They both know they're both they're like a Merkava. They're a structure, but they're a divine structure. Here, we're talking about Yez V'dover Mamish. And not only that, So he's bringing both elements now. Not only, first of all, it comes down that low, even lower than Atzillus, and it's distinction, and, and specifically in a form of distinction. Just like the spheres are distinction, the Nevroim are even more distinct because they're even more defined. And we see in Nevroim that it's a multitude of distinctions, a multitude of, div- of division and different levels, without any limit. So two things so far, that it should come down so low and it should be in such a multitude of, diff- of distinctions, of differences, of... Um, yeah. And furthermore, and additionally, that that this, that the nevroim lamata should have the capacity to contain within them the intensity of the vitality and the divine energy, the divine energy and vitality, like we see in the shamas lamata when the shama comes down below. The Velikim Osa Sa Adam Yashar. That the Abishta made the Nishama, made a person Yashar, which means that even when he comes down below, he's connected to that which is above. Shiyiba Irva Khai Salikiba Goli. That he has the capacity that, that the Nishama that comes below, that, that it's in a capacity that it has the Goli in it, it has the ability to, to experience the divine energy and vitality in a revealed way. What means Ishchai? That he was a living being. The Rebbe Rashab is bringing proof from that, that even as he's below, he manifests life. And the same is true with all the Nevroim before the Chet. They all had within them divine, a revealed divine energy. The Chet concealed it. And that's why we learned, if you remember, we learned earlier that Chaye would have been forever. People would have lived forever. Ishchai would have lived forever if there was no Chet Tetzadas. So the point he's making here is that in addition to the, the, the divine energy coming down all the way into Nivrayim and in a form of Ishchalkus and division, a multitude, an infinite multitude, and that they should be able to also experience godliness. How is it possible that down below they should experience godliness in such a revealed way as it was before the Chet? He doesn't say it right here, but also the reason he doesn't say I'm assuming is because that comes through Avoida. Here he's saying everything on its own in creation. God is able to bring the energy can come down. How does it make sense? that such divine energy from such a high place comes down to such a low place in creating in the multitude. And now that it could also has the ability to have elikuz begali, all that, kol zeh, all that is made possible hu mebchines gvura da'atik dafke. Dafke gvura da'atik, the tagbeiris, shu mebchines tagbeiris ha'atzmis, has the power to, to be able to bring the energy all the way into such a state. Chesed alone, in other words, would have the ability to bring energy to a certain point, but it would cease, as we learned earlier. But to have that type of intensity, that, to be able to, be able to achieve all that we just said, that requires Tagbeda that, that which is the is Gvuras of Atik, Tagbeda Sa'atzmis, the core type of Tagbeda, of intensity, Ukanal. As was explained earlier. Okay. So, with this, he explained what Gvura of Atik is. 
This is going to lead us soon to understand the Nikras Tzur, the Tzur, the, the, the rock where Moshe Rabbeinu stood, the Mokim Iti, the space that God created. My space is within me. Iti is with me. That's the Rishimu, the Gvura Savatik that we're learning, that is going to be the source of the Yud Gimel Midas Arachmi. But meanwhile, he hasn't stated it explicitly yet. Meanwhile, he's been explaining how from there comes all of existence. Now, this also explains, if you remember, back on top of page 1334, he said, Sur, he said, is the root of what he said there, Shedish Kol Sarshe Savas, the Shedish Havoya, everything comes from the Sur, from the rock, like from the Tzur Chalomish, everything originates from there. I originate from Chesed. So the point is, Chesed is the flow of energy. But the Tzur, the rock, the Gvura, is the power that it gives it to be able to reach all the way downward and come down into distinction. First in Atzillus, in Atzillus, both hidden and revealed, and then ultimately also in the Nevroim, the multitude and all that he just described, including the capacity to still retain Elikus. That means that it must have in the Eir, Elikis, also has something very powerful that's bringing the godliness all the way down to this world. However, the Chet Eitzadah is concealed, so we don't see it now. But when, when it was revealed before the Chet, or the Neshamas that, where the Neshama retains that divine nature, is all coming from Gvura Savatik. That's what he just said. So how any, come any, any questions? Yeah, according to this, the Seder should be not Chesed Gvura, no Gvura Chesed, the cloud. Why? You could say either way. Chesed is the etzim flow, and then gvura is inserted in it in order to make sure the flow is intense. Like, in other words, you need the water coming out of the faucet. That's chesed. Then you need something that really forces it to be able to spread and go much farther than it would go on its own. That makes sense. Okay. First, you need a er and gilui. Teva Tevla Haiti, that God says, I want to do chesed. And then he inserts in it the gvur. In addition to the fact, who says that maybe gvur does precede chesed in, in the root? In the root. You could also say that is true. Even though he doesn't get into it right here. But he did say before the shosh kalim is the mailam is kodim the shosh He said that very clearly all the way back in Aleph Reh Samach Tes, I think. That means that gvur is. Is kaidem a chesed because shorsha kaidem is kaidem. You need it to be us. So he said the shorsha kaidem kaidem the shorsha eris. That's correct. That's that's for sure the case. So then I answer two answers. They're both uh, correct. They're both correct. In the bapoil mamish of creation. So tell me what comes first, the kav, or the or the or the the or the, or the, or the, the kav comes before the kalim, but the tzimtzum and the shima become before the kav. And before the Tzimtzum, you have Eir Sof, then comes the Tzimtzum. Before the Eir Sof, you have the Helam Asm. So it all depends which way you're looking. If you're looking safe Maise B'Machshav Etchila, so then the Sheir Shakelim is the highest level. If you're talking about the actual process, the Eir comes before the Kel. It all depends where you're beginning the, to look. Something that I ask you a lot of times, but after all of this explanation, Denis Ave is talking about the Atmos itself. I'm asking again because we explain all of this. As opposed to what? Where would be in the Sava if not in the Atmos? What's your option? What are you Helema Atmi. You ever see anywhere in Chesidus it says in the Sava and Helema Atmi? Okay. I never saw it. It says in the Sava Kodesh Baruch. Now, Atmus has many levels. I think when you talk about Atmus, you may not even be re- meaning Atmus. In, in Teshtet Shalom, he says that when, you, when people speak about Atmus, they don't, they're, not, they're not talking about Atmus. They're talking about how they understand Atmus, which is right away not Atmus. So if you really want to get into it, I need to understand how you understand Atmus. According to the way that you no, understand. Don, let's not use words, not semantics. What is Atmos by? I think most people, when they talk about Atmos, could be simply Eirein Sof Lifnat Simpson is also called Atmos Ha'er. So we have to define. If you really want to push it, I'm saying, I'm challenging you. You don't have to say it to me. 
explain to somebody, not in this class, or somebody, but not, not explain to somebody what you mean by atzmus, as opposed to helam atzmi, as opposed to oyer, as opposed to lifni atzimtsum, lachad atzimtsum. Very critical to be able to define when you say atzmus, uh, not just the, the name. What does it mean? Do you mean mitzias, mit, built to mitzias nimtza? What, what are you referring to when you say atzmus? You're right. But then it's other. The is built in the serious name. So it's a question. I think that this is what, what you're saying about. Well, I say, first of all, he's not talking about that at all here right now. The only time he spoke about Nisava, if I recall correctly, was just around a few pages back. He did mention it. On page 1328, Nisava Kosh Baruch Hu. He didn't say Nisava, Nisava, um, Generally speaking, you, you know, you could also say Asmus is higher than Nesava too. Nesava kosh baruch li yisle is baruch. That means his baruch precedes Nesava if you really want to uh, be medayik. So, uh, you know, think so? You think so, Simon? I think that this is the toich base of everything. Uh, love that. Love that. Love it's, 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 yeah, because... It's the only way we could we could talk about that. And Atzmus, he was Nisava, but is Atzmus defined by Nisava? It's Nisava and Atzmus. Anyway, it's a bigger discussion. I don't want to go into right here. It's really very, so it's going to be distracting from what we're learning here. It's not, I mean, you don't see anything hinted to here. He was talking on the levels of, we'll talk about it when we have to talk. Right now, I'd rather not go there. It's, it's going to just confuse matters. Okay, so we'll stop here by the canal. Anybody else, any, anybody else has questions? Okay. So we'll stop by canal. And the next piece is going to talk about what he said earlier about how Gvura Da'atik is Malubish and Meichus which I mentioned before. And that goes back to the words at the end of the paragraph on page 1334. So he's now tying, he's coming to tying it all together and bringing it back to Tzur and ultimately to the, to the transformation, the third transformation of Gvuras Mumutakis, the sweetening of the Gvura from within, which is ultimately where he's leading to. But uh, yeah, we're almost there. We're getting there. Continues to be pretty heavy stuff. Okay, I see no questions, so we'll start by canal.